Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Aquarius for June 2018. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, see what's new on my blog, and also, if you're interested in learning astrology for personal or professional development, then check out my astrology apprenticeship program that will be enrolling again in the beginning of June. So what's going on in the month of June? We've got eclipse season starting already, the eclipses that will be... Um, Starting in July, we will start to feel those very likely. Many people will in June, seeing manifestations. And in fact, that's what the focus for this um, video is about, is the beginning of that eclipse season. We also have Mars retrograde, which we've been talking about forever, starting at the end of the month. So we'll talk about the implications for that. And we've got all kinds of other things to discuss, my favorite dates, things to watch out for, and things to look out for specifically for Aquarius. So I'm calling the theme of this month for Aquarius, Inspired Change. The solar eclipse, solar eclipse energies tend to bring in new opportunities. We try to understand these eclipses better by dividing them this way and saying the solar eclipse brings in new things, the lunar eclipse ends old, you know, previous things. But in reality, whenever we have the beginning of something, it's really the end of something else. And whenever something else ends, there's the seed is planted for a new beginning. So it's really much more gray. So this time of eclipses is a radical time of sudden trajectory changes and awesome accomplishments or endings or dramatic closures and awesome new beginnings, bright new doors opening for um, a different way of life. So the way that I'm setting up my um, reports for the next several months to cover these three eclipses is I'm going to talk about the solar eclipse, which is at 20 degrees of Cancer on July 12th in June. That's what we're going to talk about now. There's a second eclipse, July 27th, a total lunar eclipse at four, almost five degrees of Aquarius. I'll talk about where that will hit for Aquarius in the July report. And then in the August report, I'll talk about the partial solar eclipse at 18 degrees of Leo and where that might hit for Aquarius, okay? So now we're gonna talk about this first eclipse. And the reason why we're talking about the July eclipse in June is because we often see four to six, even sometimes eight weeks before an eclipse that manifestations, events, news comes in from that eclipse. When we are working with an eclipse cycle, there's a longer term picture that's at play. And things can be going on at any time in this eclipse cycle, not just as we get closer to the eclipses. You'll be seeing movement along the Aquarius Leo fronts and, and this also this Cancer story in the backdrop, going along for these, the years that it's in there. But there's an increase in notable events when it's eclipse time. And this four to six weeks before starts to activate things, okay? So in June, you might see these new openings, which may include endings or culminations or bringing of awareness to your sixth house. So early and middle degree people, you will experience this eclipse. When I say early and middle degree, that means the first basically 20 days of the sign or the first 20 degrees if you're watching for your rising sign. So you will see this in your sixth house. Now, some of you later middle people and then you late degree Aquarius is the last 10 days of the sign, the last 10 degrees for your, if you're watching for your rising sign, you'll see this in your fifth house, okay? So the early and middle degree placements in the sixth house, you are likely to see things involving your health. Maybe it's a health crisis that brings your awareness to something that was under cover, or maybe it's a health resolution. If you've been struggling with something, you could end a chapter of struggle and begin a new level of health at this time. You could start to do a new modality. You could get information or access to other resources that helps you to pull through a health issue. If you're not having any health issues, it could just be changes with what you're doing with your diet, with your lifestyle, with how you take care of yourself, new things that you eat, new things that you do with your body, exercise, etc. Or it could be a focus on one of these things for your work or a hobby, you know, so the, the idea of um, diets and herbs and um, nutrition and acupuncture or just traditional medicine, any of these things, are they're coming up 
And it could be because you're interested in studying them or doing work with them, or you already do that. Or it could be that you're having those modalities, you know, be done to you for some reason. Yoga is in there also. So um, studying yoga, things like that. Um, things involving pets could come up, new pets. Um, one thing to note about new pets is that as we get closer to June 26th, for many people, ambitions might wane. So if you're looking at getting a pet and the one that you're thinking about is a little bit busier and maybe harder to manage than you might be able to handle, there's more of a chance that you'll take on more than you can manage in, in this Mars retrograde time. So just be really sure that the type of animal that you get is one that you can continue to work with even if your ambitions are a little bit less, you know. This can help you have your pet find a forever home and increase the odds of finding the perfect pet. So something involving a new pet or a pet that you have, um, it could be also involving your work. This is the house of your daily work. So if you work from home, your home work. If you're at the office, your office life. So if you're self-employed, this can mean a new, um, new opportunity for work or something like that. Or you could just have something notable happening at work. This is a, a work energy. So change at work change with your diet, change with animals. For your late degree placements, if your birthday or your degree is later in the sign, you might see these things in the sixth house, but you also might see them in the fifth house. So for you, you might see an increase in the, the likelihood of new love, fertility, creativity, and fun. And this is because the fifth house rules those things. So you could have romance come back into your relationship. You could have love from the past come back. You could have um, creative projects bubbling up for you to work with, things like that. So these are the things that are most on my mind for Aquarius this month. Now I want to go into details about the energies that you're going to be feeling, um, the themes of this month in general for everybody. Also, more about this Mars retrograde transit, which is very long. We've been I've been prepping you for this for a while, things you might find during this time. And also a little bit more about the general implication of the eclipse. And my favorite dates, if you have to get things done and pull things through before this wall of eclipses gets bigger, I'll give you those dates as well as some dates to watch out for. So I'm going to go into all that now. So I'm calling the theme of June 2018 for all signs the magical act of releasing attachment with a sub theme or sub themes of recreation and recreation. This abundance of air energy um, this month is going to bring a lot of restlessness, this need to move, variety seeking, um, the urge to communicate and connect will be very strong. And there will be many opportunities for this as well. So trips, travel near and far, sparkling conversations, chances to connect with people online and in person, a lot of busyness. People often notice when the sun is in Gemini and, the, and um, at this time of year, we've got a lot of busyness. You know, you'll see that things are ramped up. You're here, you're there, you're moving around. There's lots of things that you're um, trying to pull together. And also interests and in things can be coming up and could be uh, all over the board. The urge to move and express will be increased from this energy, but for many people, the desire for movement will be towards recreation rather than productivity. And this is compliments of the impending Mars retrograde transit. We've been talking about this for a long time. I've been prepping you for this. And of course, you can um, look at my blog, Your Guide to Mars Retrograde, and you can look at my video on the topic. You can just put in Annie Botticelli Mars Retrograde, and you'll pull up my other resources to go deeper into this. But for the most part, for most people, ambitions start to wane, okay? So the theme, the key theme that occurs so much in Mars retrograde is frustration, but it doesn't have to be that way. That only happens if you're trying to go at your usual pace in that transit that's not wanting you to do that. Um, so if you take cues from what's happening and you stop trying to force things, like dropping your agenda, this is one of the reasons why I'm calling this uh, the theme of this month, the magical act of releasing attachment. If you drop your agendas, then you can flow more. If you give yourself permission to chill, um, then the odds of frustration will be much less because you're not trying to push up against 
this wall of energy that's pushing backwards. So um, there are some people, however, that have the opposite effect when Mars is in retrograde. Mars rules movement and some people, and, and how you use your energy, it rules the assertiveness, um, you know, the, the, that get up and go, oomph, your oomph. So if, so if you were born with Mars retrograde in your natal chart, you might have the opposite effect when Mars goes into retrograde. You might be what might, some people might call lazy or laid back or not ambitious most of the time. But then something crazy happens, maybe you haven't known what it was until now, then Mars retrograde comes and you get lit up while everybody else is going the other way. So that's why I always say above everything, you have to honor your own personal flow and your intuition when you're listening to horoscopes because there are always caveats to the general things that we share through horoscopes. So in any case, I always like to give you the heads up because if you notice yourself getting what you, you know, describe as lazy and then you're trying to give yourself a hard time about it, you can make this month and this transit, which runs from the end of June to the end of August, but really it started May 11th when the shadow period started and it goes through the beginning of October. This is a long time. So if you understand this is going on, it's more likely that you can give yourself permission to relax. And if you give yourself permission to relax, pure genius can come to you when you're in that relaxed state. The way I like to describe the magic that can happen with this energy um, is with a typical story. I know myself, I've heard many situations where let's say a couple is trying to have a baby and they're having trouble getting pregnant and there's so much stress and there's pressure and they're putting it on and they're worried and all of this energy is going towards this certain outcome. Then when they make the decision to adopt, sometimes they get pregnant. And the doctors chalk it up as the stress was released from the venture, right? So this is, this is the energy that I want you to remember during this time because a massive amount of magic, a massive amount of inspiration can come from that quiet time, like the Shavasana at the end of, the, of a yoga session. That quiet little short time of integration, of rest, integrates all of the work done prior. And very often when Mars is in retrograde, work that you've done before comes to you. So this energy um, of being like a spider that's going to be, you know, be a theme that continues for a while where you've done work, now you're letting everything come to you is a good one to follow. Now, if you do have some things that you have to push through and you don't want to wait until December when we're done with Mars retrograde, then Mercury retrograde, then Venus retrograde, then there, you, there are some points here in June where you could do that. And my favorite days are right in the beginning of the month. But I'll go into more details about that. But if you do have some things that you have to push through and you feel that they're, you know, intuitively it's time to do it, then you might be able to take advantage of that energy. Okay, so I really love this month for vacations because this desire to rest and slack makes it makes an increase in the possibility that you'll enjoy the vacation and you'll leave your worries and work behind. So if you are a traveler or you're planning a trip or you just like to read about travel stuff, you can check out my website, Astrology Kissed Travel Bliss, and I do monthly astrology travel reports so that you can understand some highlights as far as it relates to travel. And there are also fun blogs and inspiration for travel. There's a new moon on June 13th, and this is another increase in this opportunity for travel adventures near and far, connecting with siblings, cousins, and other relatives. If you have to make a last minute purchase of a communication device, if you know that coming soon your um, car or your phone or something is due to get, if you're due to get a new one, this time around, you know, the beginning of the month or around this new moon of the, the 13th, might be a good time to squeeze these things in because Mars rules metal. And well, it's one of the, of course it's complicated, but things that are made of metal are under the, the, the um, rule of Mars. So buying machinery, utilizing machinery, um, and of course everything has metal in it, all of our devices. It's, the energy is better for it 
when we're further away from the retrograde. So if you can help it, sometimes you might not be able to help it, in which case don't worry, just go with the flow. But if you know it's coming, you might wanna take advantage of this, um, this time in the middle of the month. So increasing your recreation time is a great goal. If you're going to have any goals during this time, it would be goals to have more fun and goals to relax and goals to take vacations and even goals to study, but in a laid back leisurely way. You know, this is a time that can greatly favor education, but especially in flexible programs that allow you to go at your own pace so that if you turn out to lose some ambitions that you're not penalized. If you have, if you're interested in education that feels more like a hobby rather than a stressful obligation, then it's very well indicated during this Mars retrograde because we could see that as part of a focus on recreation. You might notice a slowdown in work, finances, romance, etc. But like I said, there is an amazing chance for you to reap rewards from the past. So things may slow down in some senses, but things from the past could come to fruition now without you even doing anything and it might seem quite magical. If you have to do some work related things, it's better to focus on clients from the past, ideas from the past, things like that if at all possible. These retrogrades tend to fall, uh, uh, make things get called into question. So things that were set or intended may drastically change form during this time or become irrelevant or uninteresting. So just notice the cycle, you know, and just because something um, isn't, you know, kind of goes away from your energy field at this time, it doesn't mean it's forever. I know um, I personally have Aries rising and Mars rules Aries, so I notice that I'm very much affected by this transit. Everybody's affected by it, but people with um, Aries and Scorpio placements, strong Aries and Scorpio placements, and you notice it more because Mars rules Aries and co rules Scorpio. But I've noticed that um, I just love this energy because it helps you to relax. And whenever this happens now, I plan my rests for this time. But if you didn't know that this were coming, you might think, wow, what is happening to me? I'm like this. So I feel like when Mars retrograde, like, wow, I'm never gonna be ambitious again. That's so weird. And then as soon as Mars goes direct, I'm back to my normal ambitious self. You know, so it's just interesting to watch your own personal cycles with this. And as I mentioned before, you might have the opposite occur and notice that too. Learning astrology and using astrology is one big experiment, you know, and the more you learn about what's going on and then you pay attention to your personal flow with that, the more you learn about the art and the science. Okay, so many people are going to be questioning many things in life, but there'll be a special focus for the job, profession, life path um, because of the time that Mars is going to spend getting back into Capricorn. And since it spends most of the time retrograde in Aquarius, this strong focus on reconsidering or considering for the future, defining or redefining projects or relationships involving nonprofits, humanitarian efforts, technology, and other future, um, futuristic innovations, groups, things having to do with groups and teams and friends and friendships and acquaintances, social circles and social media are all within this um, Mars and Aquarius uh, energy. You might notice um, a lot of push and pull between home and work, home and family, mother and father, because we have a notable amount of oppositions between the Cancer and Capricorn energy. So this can bring a lot of overstimulation between home and family and work and your place out in the world. Overstimulation doesn't necessarily mean bad um, or good. It's just that there are opposing forces that are both demanding equal and extra focus, which can make you feel torn um, between these competing interests. But we do also have some great aspects with Uranus that can bring amazing insights and breakthroughs or happy surprises. So uh, there are many times in this month where beautiful aspects are coupled with challenging ones. So good news and challenges could present simultaneously. You might see that going on. Okay, so the energy of this Cancer eclipse, we talked about where it would hit for you personally in your chart, but the general energy that everyone has this increased chance of experiencing is having to do with housing, home, and other family opportunities 
will likely be a, a, um, a dominating theme. There's something that a dermatologist said to me recently that I always wind up applying these random things to astrology, you know. So she said that there's an increase in skin cancer risk for people who have light colored eyes, that there's something genetic about that relationship. Okay, so that doesn't mean that all people who have light colored eyes are going to get skin cancer. And it doesn't mean that all people who don't have light colored eyes are not. But this increase in probability is how I always frame astrology. There's an increase in probability of the things that these transits tend to bring. And it doesn't mean that everybody's going to experience these things that are common. It just means there's an increase in probability. You know, the odds are more likely, like on a day when the meteorologist says, rain is 90% today. Sometimes it doesn't rain, you know? But there's that increased chance. And that's, that's what I want you to understand about the nature of these transits and the nature of these potentials. Okay, so I'm gonna give you, give you a couple of other dates um, to highlight this month. And if you want more details about dates and transits of note, then definitely go to my website, anniehelpsyou.com. Sign up for my free email newsletter. You can also sign up at CozyBySweetStarlight.com, which is where I also have written horoscopes, CozyBySweetStarlight.com. If you sign up at either of those places for my free newsletter, I write a monthly write-up with more details about these general transits in a written version a month ahead than I give in the video. Okay, so it supplements what we're gonna do here. If you have to do anything in June important, money, love, um, you know, beauty choices, anything that you have to do, the creative projects, anything important. I love the first several days of the month. We've got beautiful Venus and Jupiter trine, um, and then Venus trines Neptune. So that's my favorite time of the month, um, besides the, the middle of the month, the 13th, with that new moon in Gemini. We've got a little bit of um, challenging energy after that, like the 5th through the 7th. Logic bumping up against intuition and some challenges there. Definitely take a moment to center yourself before walking, driving, biking, etc. And try to resist the urge to text while biking or test while walking or text while driving because it just, this energy increases the odds of accidents. You want to be paying attention more. There's another sweet spot here in the middle of the month where I told you the new moon on the 13th. Um, and then there's a nice aspect between Mercury and Uranus, but at the same time, there's a challenging one with Venus and Uranus. And some other challenges there in the middle of the month. We've got another sweet spot, uh, June 19th through the 20th, when Mercury makes a, a trine to Jupiter. And then we have Mars going retrograde on the 26th. When a planet goes retrograde, there's a lot of awkwardness. So just look out for awkwardness around that time. Then there's the full moon um, in Capricorn on June 27th, and this will bring completion, fruition, accomplishment, or drama into the realms of work, career, father, father figures, and your place out in the world. So those are the things that are most on my mind for this month. Definitely check out my websites, anniehelpsyou.com if you're interested in learning astrology as a profession or just for your self-development. If you'd like to be a coach, I have a coach training program. I have an astrology apprenticeship program. I also have a course called Creating Successful Online Business where I teach you how to create an online presence and funnel it into your um, services that will help you to live the life that you want and not be geographically bound. If you want written horoscopes that are focusing on different areas than the videos that I make, then go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com. If you would like to get information about astrology travel reports that I write for each month, then go to AstrologyKissedTravelBliss.com. And definitely check out my husband's website, IamHelios.com, I-A-M-H-E-L-I-O-S.com for wonderful astrology and tarot readings. He also has some really cool free offerings on his site that bring sound vibrations um, that you can download that help to soften the energies of the, the, tran the current transit. So that's something really cool he's doing. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.